Shalom Israel, this is heaven. I didn't tell my other dream and I meant to, so I'm going to make a separate video and tell this dream. This dream was about, I got a call from somebody and it's somebody I do know and they called me, put me on video call and they were telling me, look, you know, at the sky and they put the the, they phone out to show me you know to the window to show me the sky and I saw the moon and it, it was telling me that uh, darkness is going into the sky I like the you know the sky is breaking pretty much and I was like okay I don't know what they mean by that and so I was like I'm hoping they don't mean you know what I think they mean but when they showed me it was, it was, it was the moon right there and all around the moon it was these dark black patches going all around the moon I was like oh my god this is terrible and in a dream the person started crying out and started yelling and they were like cursing and saying that this is how the devil gets you in the end this is you know the devil is just you know a bastard you know that they were cut you know they're cussing up a storm and i was like okay well what are you talking about like what's wrong and they was telling me in the dream it was so petty but they was telling me something like they got into an argument you know at the store pretty much over something that they wanted to get but they were not allowed to get or whatever and they shouldn't have been getting and they got into an argument and they got it anyways and in the dream they were like getting you know like about to cry and stuff and telling me you know I don't know if I'm gonna be forgiven I don't know this is probably the end and I was telling them because I was looking out you know there was a little people on the door and I was looking out of it trying to see the sky for some reason but I was able to see it somehow and the sky it was starting to spread everywhere like the black patches started to spread e everywhere and it was scaring me because what started happening was we started hearing like very demonic screams and it was like oh my god and it was like scaring me it's like I don't know if this is the end though in the dream I don't know why but I felt like it was gonna pass over but I wasn't sure I 100% wasn't sure if it was gonna pass over or was at the end but I was just telling them in the dream that uh you know, once you see uh, certain signs of the end times, once it's over and too late, it's too late to get on the ground and repent. It's too late to ask for forgiveness. But I told them anyways, you know, to comfort their heart. I told them, forgive yourself and ask God for forgiveness. But I did tell them in a dream also that this is why these little things, you don't get tempted with these little things you don't. You know do these things that you deem small because it's not small once once you see the punishment then it's over it's too late that's why you don't dibble dabble in sin uh, you know i was telling them i don't know if it's over or not but i was trying to just tell them it's okay and i started to repeat myself again to uh forgive yourself you know i was telling them that when i was i woke up and yeah that dream scared the crap out of me i almost did not want to go back to sleep i did but i didn't want to and yeah Israel, that is a warning to all of us. These things you deem small, these things you think, okay, you know, I can do this or that. Don't dibble dabble in sin, an ounce. Any little sin on that day, you're going to be punished severely for it. If God don't throw you into hell, you're going to be punished horribly for it. Don't. If it's something even, I know you may take it as small, but if it's something that your parents told you to stay away from, as long as it's not against the commands and laws that God sent down, you have to obey your parents. Even if it's something like they want you to go on a healthier diet, you're going to have to obey your parents. You cannot go against your parents. Now, you may ask for permission. Hey, you know, can I, you know, eat this or that? If they say yes to you, then do it. But if your parents want you to do a particular thing, if your parents want you to take them to the store, anything, you have to obey your parents. The only time you don't obey your parents is if they're telling you to do something wrong. And and as for women, when it comes to your husbands, as long as they're not telling you to do anything wrong in the book of God, you have to obey your husband. You just do. And anything that they tell you to do, if they want you to get up and go make them a sandwich, then that's what you do. You can't go against them. If they told you to stay away from this or you know or that then you have to obey you can't say no you can't go against or when they're gone and you you do what you want to do no you still they you know their order still 
matters you still have to listen to that and Israel I'm just telling you this because I do have a feeling and a sense of fear in me that something is about to take place very soon I don't know what it is it feels good and bad like it feels like okay I don't know my thoughts is that this place California this place is about to get destroyed like I'm feeling it in my bones like this place is about to get destroyed and something bad is about to happen I can't tell you what it's either meteorites falling down earthquake I can't tell you what direction is coming from I don't even know if the dead is about to be raised back to life I don't know what it is but I feel it's not good and I don't know and then I also feel like okay God is coming to deliver his people but I do have a feeling, a sense of negative side of that, that if you on the wrong side, if God comes back and you sinning in any way, you're not going. And it feels like real serious to me right now. I'm trying to get to you, through you. I'm trying to get through the people that I love that's around me, my family, to just keep on a straight path. Don't do anything, you know, that you're going to lose big in the end, that you're going to be left behind that you're going to be left behind to get destroyed do what you can to make it to get on the ship to get on whatever god is going to deliver you on a boat a ship whatever it is if these gentiles is going to take you back to your land whatever it is and my mind tells me if they give you an option with these reparations to either go back to you know to your to live in your own home wherever they take you i don't know if they give you that option or they give you the option just to take the money my my thoughts would be you take the option to go home if that's where they're sending you you know but they don't usually hold on to the end of the bargain but if they would then that's what you should do i do believe i don't believe you should take the money just to make another stay inside of their cursed place their cursed country no you should take the chance to go home in israel take the chance go home when God comes to deliver us you don't know how he's going to deliver us you don't know if it's going to be through that you don't know if it's going to be through the meteorites falling we just going to have to make a move you don't know if God is going to send some chariots or some ships down to come get us pick us up and take us you don't know how this is going to go it can all go different ways for us depending on what we earn depending on what we do depending on what choices we make but Israel get aboard don't get left behind stop let, I mean, holding on to this world let let it go stop doing things to please people stop wanting to travel around the world and experience new things whatever you're trying to do it's not important let it go it just drives me crazy that some people don't, don't seem like they know how to let go of this world they just want to be a part of it to the end until it gets destroyed let it go while you still can stop holding on to it stop doing things stop trying to make yourself look good stop being prideful stop buying things to bring in like clothes or expensive things expensive cars expensive houses things to make yourself look presentable to men look presentable to god god likes those god loves those who are humble god loves those with a meek spirit god loves those who put on a sackcloth those who stick with their family those who pray those who fast for the lord God don't like those who are arrogant, those who are always out and about, those who are not even trying to provide for their family, those who are just worried about traveling the world and looking good to oppress men, following new trends and trying to get into this and that that the world is getting into. And I don't mean this in any way, but fuck the world and go turn to God now before it's too late. And I'm saying this with all sincerity of my heart because I feel like there's somebody I need to save. I don't know who it is besides myself. There's somebody that is this alert is going off in my brain that this person needs to hear the word. This person needs to be saved. And if it's any of you, please take heed of the warning before it's too late. Please. I want you all to be saved. I want myself to be saved. I am doing everything right now to be saved. And you know one thing that my father told me that helps me? And it's from God. But one of the things that he really opened my mind to that feel like I have a chance to be saved is simple. It sounds simple, but it means so much to me. And that is to purge myself now. That to, that good removes evil. 
and the only way that you can really remove your evil if you stop turning back to it you can't do good and then revert and then do good and then revert again you have to just completely stop completely put it into it and then you have a peace of mind when you just completely quit first you're gonna feel sad first you're gonna feel a longing first you want to you're gonna feel a strong desire that you need to turn back to this that you need to do this but once you overcome that once you overcome the longing the desire to do sin the desire to go back then once you overcome that you become stronger god is going to strengthen your heart to stay away from it you know what god is going to do he's going to turn that sin into disgust to the filth in your heart it's going to be filthy to you when you see that sin it's going to be filthy to you when the next time the devil suggests for you to do it you're not going to want to do it you're going to even ask yourself the question why in the world was i doing that in the first place why in the world would i go there and it's all it's going to end up trust me i've been through it it's going to end up where you see that side of yourself you're going to remember your past and say who was that person that is not me and people might take you as crazy when they say that to you when you know they ask you the question you know why did you do this and you're going to be like i don't know why i did that that wasn't me i'm a totally different person that's like my evil twin but trust me there's truth to that it really feels like like how did i go that far you're going to really you know it's, it's going to be hard to wrap your mind around that but that's when you overcome your sin your, or your desire to do it. And yes, the devil was never going to stop, so don't think it. So the devil is going to keep coming with it constantly. Even in your later years, he's going to keep coming and suggesting the same thing. But you keep going away from it. He's even going to try to make you feel the desire, the need, the want to do it. He's going to make you feel like you like the sin again. But you know what? It's just a feeling. It's not you. Stop saying that these feelings that's being placed on you is you. It's not. It's the devil. You were not having these feelings as a kid. You were not having these feelings as a baby when you were coming out of the womb. When you were coming out of your mama. You were not thinking these things. You were not thinking carnal. You were not thinking, you know, arrogant, whatever it was. You were not thinking to be argumentative, to be chaotic. All these things are from the devil. And that's what my father told me. That is one of the things that really helped me. Is that... These things are from the devil. Once you start noticing that these weird thoughts that come to you, that these weird thoughts that try to, you know, incline you to do this or that, that try to lure you away from God, when you realize these things are just the devil's traps, then you will realize what you need to do is seek protection with God. You need to pray to God the moment that these things come and come to you, whether it's through people, whether it's through somebody trying to, you know, sexually attract you somebody coming to you in your life and try to get you away from the you know the path of God trying to make you do something with them you got to get away from that person if you got to literally run and that's what you do if you got to literally call people over there if you got to literally yell to get other people's attention for people to crowd around you to watch you then that's what you do even with my father told me is that even if you got to tell people where your imperfections are yeah it's going to get embarrassing yeah it's going to get annoying when people see you going astray and going towards those directions but guess what they're keeping you straight everybody already knows the cat's out the bag there's nothing to be embarrassed about no more once you get over the beginning part of you telling everybody you know about your problem areas whether you know i can name them whether it's you or you you're a rapist whether you freaking you like little kids whatever it is whether you gay you freaking a homosexual whether you you know you carnal you want to date you want to go online and do something sneaky you want to watch porno you want to think something bad regardless of what it is you want to um, argue with somebody you argumentative you just like fight whether you a psychopath whether you're a sociopath whatever it is whether you crazy and you thinking things is happening and it's not you just it's all inside of your head once you tell people these things you just let it all out of the bag and you, you do it for the right reasons you do it so people can keep watch on you then yeah it may get embarrassing but guess what people are keeping you on a straight path every time watch every time they you look like you going towards that direction I and mean, you may not even be going towards that direction but may you may look like you're just going you heading towards that direction and then everybody's gonna say hey look what you're doing you know hey stay away from this hey get away from that hey what you what you doing well you need to stop even if you're not i mean you could defend yourself and say hey i'm not doing this don't get mad though because you went there before and it ain't no telling that you ain't gonna go back there don't fool yourself and say hey I, you know i'm better now it's been years i haven't no the devil's gonna get you 
You know why? Because that's, you know, that's arrogance. The devil is going to try to get you again in the same thing. You're going to realize, you know, how did I do this again? I told myself I never drink again. I told myself I never do this again. I told myself I never party again. Whatever it is. And you're going to find yourself doing it. And then when you find yourself doing it, that could be the very day that, you know, you die and then you go to hell. And that's why I'm saying it's very serious because the devil, you think the devil is not going to try to get you on that? Yes, he is. He's going to try to get you when it's the end. He's going to try to get you, get you when it's the end of your life. And then all suddenly you find yourself doing something stupid and then you die doing it. And then you go to hell. That's how the devil gets you every time. That's how the devil gets a lot of his freaking dupes who follow him. That's how the devil gets a lot of us black people. We go astray and then all of a sudden you find you shot in the head by a cop. If you really think into it, that's probably why most of them are dying like that. It's not, it is because we under, we still probably under oppression. They still got respite of the devil. You know, it's still, you know, they time to shine until it's our time. Whatever little time they got left because their respite is running out. It's running thin. And eventually God is going to come back to destroy them. And he's coming back to save you, Israel. If you keep yourself straight. If you're not with them. If you're not doing iniquities. You know, but then that's how the devil is going to try to get you. He's going to try to get you, you know. You find yourself doing something wrong, being on drugs, doing something that you, you know, your parent told you to be in at a certain time. You go out and do something wrong, and then you get killed by them. And you know the cops are surrounding you, and they, you know, trying to suffocate you, you know, strangle you, whatever they're trying to do, kill you. So you go to the, go to hell, you know. And that's what I'm saying. You have to keep yourself straight. All your enemies are watching you at all times. The, these demons do these people are always keeping an eye on you waiting for you to go astray waiting for you to make the wrong turn so they can come and kill you and destroy you while you're still in sin and so you can go to hell you have to keep yourself straight these things you take as small is not you just need to stop all of it you need to desist you need to turn to God while you still can and as I was saying as my father told me quit all your sin you will find peace in mind once you do. Once you keep yourself straight. Yes, you will struggle here and there. But your struggles need to just be you staying away from it. You restraining yourself from going to it. Don't actually be struggling. Telling yourself, oh, you know, I'm having a hard time. And you doing it. And you saying, okay, I'm trying to do what's right. But then you still doing what's wrong. You still drinking. You still smoking. You still partying. Whatever you doing. Because then you ain't actually trying. When you're trying is when you act, you stay you stay at home and you stay away from all these desires. You stay away from you know the aisle where there's freaking beer, whatever it is. If you you if you got a drinking problem, you stay away from where there's cigarettes at. You don't go near that. You don't go near your desires. That's what my dad always told me as well. Well, God first always told me, don't go to your desires. Don't go near it. If it's, if it's something that's going to tempt you, you know it's going to tempt you. Get away from it. Get away from your temptations. Don't pretend like it ain't tempting you. Don't pretend like, oh, you know, I don't have these problems. I'm perfect. No, if it tr truly is, you get up and you leave away from it. You tell yourself the truth. God already knows that about you. Then why try to hide it from God? You can't. God already knows that you have issues, that you have these imperfections. You got these problems, but you know what? What you do is you try to clean them up and not try. You clean them up. You do your best to purify yourself and stay away from these sins. That way you don't got to be purified by the fire when it comes. But what he told me is good removes evil. Good takes away from evil. So if you did something wrong in your past, then you desist that. You never turn to it again. It's just like if somebody went to jail for murder. Well, let's say... They got out of jail and they got another chance and then they completely stopped murdering anybody. They, you know, they stopped killing. They stopped, you know, doing anything like that. And they completely changed their life around. They did good. Instead of, you know, killing people, they helped people. You know, they, you know, help people from getting murdered. Let's say that, you know, they help do something to replace their sin. They take care of their family. You know, they admonish and warn people to not kill anybody, to not shed blood, you know to you know save people love people you know don't become so heartless 
that you kill people, that you want to, you know, murder people. And when they see people like themselves, because you can always tell, you know, a murderer can tell another murderer. Because you can always see yourself in other people. It's like if you see a whore, and, you know, if you're a whore, then you're going to tell somebody else is, you know, slutting it about and having an agenda to go be a whore, a slut. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's also what my father taught me. It's always you're always gonna see yourself in other people. You ain't always gonna know because you're gonna do the similar things. You already know if somebody's being sneaky and you a sneaky devil, then you're gonna see sneakiness in somebody else. Well if you see that, you don't just let them go do it. No. Warn them and say, you know, I see myself in you. You need to stay away from this. If this is what you're doing, if you're gonna go kill somebody, you know, if let's say you're a murderer, if you see somebody that's a, another person that's a murderer, if you're going to go sneak around to kill somebody, or if you're a thief, if you see somebody else you're about to steal from the store, if, you, if you're about to go steal that candy, if you're about to go steal this and that, don't, you know, let it, you know, say it loud and clear. That way that person be in, in the spotlight. If you put somebody in the spotlight, then they more, you know, more than likely not to go that route. And I'm not saying that, you know, be, you know, gossip and tell people, hey, you know, this person did this and that and, you know, tell everybody's business. No, that's not what I'm saying. But if you got to yell to somebody to stop them from doing their crime and say, hey, you know, don't don't go over there and kill that person. Don't go over there and steal this. And then sometimes you just do got to do that. That way that, you know, if everybody notice, it may make them stop. You know, a deer caught in the headlights. But... If you do those things, if you warn against the thing where you know where you went astray, and even if you go beyond that, where you see you know where people go astray or people in your life went have went astray at in these areas, if you warn against that, if you do everything to replace your sin and you never go back to it because there's no use to try to warn against it, you doing it yourself. There's no use. You got to stop yourself, and then try to save everybody else. You know, um. You warn against it. You do good deeds to remove that. You know, let's say that even if it's, you know, helping people. If it's, you know, helping people, doing good deeds, donating, giving charity, you know, helping people, helping homeless people, anything. If you, you know, been mean to a homeless person and you, you know, you called them, you know, a piece of, piece of crap. Then if you see, next time you see a homeless person, then you treat them with kindness. You give them everything, you know, anything that you got. Even if it's the jacket off your back, you give it to them. Even if it's the shoes on your feet, you give it to them. Because you know what? You can end up that person. You know? And then you got to replace your evil. You got to do good. And you got to mean it. You know, don't repeat your behavior. If you've been, you know, chaotic or argumentative, then the next time you get into a combative situation, you know, argumentative situation, then you you be the one that stand up and make peace. You be the one that don't respond to negativity or evil. And somebody calling you out of your name, and somebody calling you a B-I-T-C-H, you don't respond to that. You know, instead, why don't you respond to good? And next time, every time, you be the example for the rest. If it's children around, you be the example and say, hey, let's make peace. Let's do this the right way. And, you know, people will start looking at you like, oh, you know, this person, you know, always does what's right. This person is the one who always makes peace. When before, they said, oh, you know, you're, you're the most chaotic person that ever lived. You know, these things can change. You can mold yourself. You know, you are moldable people. Mold yourself to be a good person, and then that's how it is on your record, if God wills. And God, you know, once he saw you as some criminal, but then now, since you're proving yourself, since you're not going back to those sins, you're leaving that in the past, and if possible, you can remove all that evil by doing good now. By doing as much good as you freaking can right now even if it's a smile even if it's talking to somebody happy you're a miserable nigga all the time and you always disgruntle a man well be happy come out you know it might it may shock people at first it may you know discourage you and people act weird and say hey you know why you acting like that all of a sudden this that ain't you you know you that disgruntled nigga in the corner you know you always got an attitude you know you always chaotic you know even somebody say you know you a slut you know you you ain't decent you ain't this you ain't pure you ain't but you know what that's the devil trying to pull you back into being that way. You don't say, since you think this about me, then I might as well be this way. No, you don't caught up into that. And, you know, if somebody say, you know, you always usually fight. You know, you're a fighter. Then, you, you know, you stay away from fighting. You stay away from, you know, being combative. Instead, you just keep yourself on a straight path, regardless what people say. Even if people, no matter what you do, they see you as a devil no matter what. They still see you as the same murderer you were before. Or they still see you as, you know, whatever it was, a thief. Then 
it's not for you to please people, is it? It's for you to please God. You change for God, even if they still see you like that. You know what? You still, you just say, okay, that was me in the past. I'm not doing it now. But if that is the way you see me, then I cannot change that. And I'm not here to change that. I'm here to try to make, you know, myself better in the eyesight of God, to please God. Because you're not going to please people, like I said in the beginning. You're not going to please people. You're only going to please God. And that's what I'm saying. Do what you can right now to be pleasing to your Lord. This is heaven.